Who do you think is the best player in the NBA right now? Uh, myself. Is that, have you always had that kind of confidence? Because I, don't, I asked you that question a year ago and you said it was Giannis. So what's given you that confidence? I got a lot of respect for a lot of guys in the league. Yeah. Giannis for sure. Um, Jokic, obviously he just won. And B, guys that won MVP. Uh, I truly do believe every time I step on the floor, I'm the best player. Now this is just simply delusional. During an interview with Malika Andrews, Jason Tatum, a superstar talent in his own right, made a bold claim about being the best in the NBA. However, upon hearing this, I couldn't help but wonder who truly stands out this year and who will ultimately clinch the MVP title. In the realm of the NBA, being named MVP and being recognized as the best player are different distinctions. While MVP signifies the most valuable player to the team, the title of the best player often aligns with dominance and leadership across various statistical categories. Surprisingly, the best player doesn't always secure the MVP accolade, as evidenced by numerous instances in NBA history so far. Take for instance the 1993 season when Charles Barkley secured the MVP title over Michael Jordan despite Michael Jordan's undisputed dominance. Another example is in 2011 when Derrick Rose was named MVP over LeBron James, despite James's unparalleled performance that year. More recently, Joel Embiid clinched the MVP honor, overshadowing the consistent brilliance of Nikola Jokic in recent years. Now, these scenarios often arise due to compelling narratives like D. Rose's historic achievement as the youngest MVP in NBA history, and then obviously the second being voter fatigue. Now, voter fatigue is simply when people get tired of voting for the same player over and over again. So after a player wins back-to-back -back MVPs, that's when people usually get tired of that and stop voting for that player. Which is evident in MB's win following consecutive seasons of dominance from Nikola Jokic. Next, we have a list created by Sanford University showing some of the most recent MVPs in NBA history and the deserved MVP that year based on who was the best. Dating all the way back to 2015, you'll see Steph Curry's unanimous MVP year, and then as well as last year with Joe Embiid. In 2015, Steph Curry won MVP and was also the best player in the league that year. In 2016, Russell Westbrook won the MVP and was also the best player in the league that year as well. In 2017, James Harden won and was also the best player. In 2018 and 19, Giannis won, but James Harden was deserved of the MVP that year. In 2020 and 2021, Jokic won and was also the best player of both of those years. Lastly, we have in 2022, Joel Embiid won, but Jokic was deserved MVP that year. Now you might be wondering, how do you figure out who's deserved MVP? Well, there are seven advanced statistics to show who really is the most valuable player to their team. The first is win shares per 48 minutes, which is how many wins a player contributed in 48 minutes. The second is value over replacement player. This is an estimate on the box score. And the third is player efficiency rating, PER. This is just simply the efficiency of a player. The fourth stat we're going to be using is player impact estimate. This is a player's impact for their team. The fifth is going to be floor impact counter. This is all box score stats put into one stat. And then the sixth stat we're going to be using is win probability. This is weighing more into clutch shots and the turnovers. And lastly, the seventh is approximate value, which is an estimate on a player's value. Now, with all that said, let's delve into this year's MVP race. Among the top contenders in any order, Luka Doncic, Shea Gilgis Alexander, Giannis Antetokounmpo, Nikola Jokic, and Jason Tatum. Let's dissect their performances to determine the standout player and true MVP of this season so far. Now the first player we're going to look at is Luka Doncic. Luka is having a stellar season this year so far, leading the league in points with 34.2, 8.8 rebounds per game, third in assists with 9.5 on 49.2% from the field. And his team record is 33 and 23 at 6 in the West. Comparing this with Shea Gilgis Alexander this year, he is averaging 31.1 points behind Luka in second place, 6.5 assists per game, and 5.5 rebounds per game on 54.6% from the field. And his record is 39 and 17 with second place in the Western Conference. 
Now the third player we're going to be looking at is Giannis. Giannis is having a great year, averaging 30.8 points per game in third, 6.4 assists, 11.2 rebounds in six on 61.6% from the field with a team record of 36 and 21 in third in the Eastern Conference. Now, as a run and dunk guy, Giannis is having a remarkable year. But as of recently, Nikola Jokic has been the greatest player, averaging 26.1 points, 12 rebounds in fourth place, and 8.6 assists in fourth on 57.7 from the field. This man is almost averaging a triple double. That is crazy. And a team record of 38 and 19 in fourth in the West. Now, the last player we're going to be looking at is the superstar talent Jason Tatum himself, Lucas. who has been averaging 27.1 points in ninth, 8.6 rebounds, and 4.8 assists on 47.5% from the field. And his team record is 44 and 12. And that is the best in the entire NBA so far. Now, Tatum has been great, but I yet would not call him the best in the NBA so far. Now, based on the normal stats, the casual NBA fan would likely think Luka Doncic would be the leader in this year's MVP race. But I am no casual NBA fan, to say the least. So, through the seven advanced statistics that we talked about earlier to determine an MVP, I ranked all the top five candidates in the MVP race, and here are the results. Now, like I said earlier, these are some of the best stats we can use to determine who really is the most valuable player in the league. But the first thing I will say when you look at the chart, there is a noticeable pattern in first place. Jokic is in first in five of the seven advanced statistics, and in second for the other two. Besides that though, Mr. Best Player in the League is actually sitting dead last in every single category. I will say, Jason Tatum, I respect the confidence, but come on, man. <laughs> though, ultimately when we consider the advanced statistics and on-court performances, Nikola Jokic emerges as the frontrunner for both the best player and the MVP this season. So if voter fatigue doesn't ruin this year's MVP race, Jokic seems like he has it in the bag. However, for casual NBA fans who may not delve into advanced statistics, perceptions based solely on traditional statistics may lean towards a player like Luka or Giannis as the standout player this year. But who do you guys believe will ultimately clinch the MVP title this year?